of course I believe that's created by God. So, Gravity's created by God. Gravity's created by God. I am created God. by God yes. without wings, therefore yes. I cannot fly. Okay, yes. so when these physical limitations are created by God, isn't it God's will to not create you with wings and to create this thing you call gravity that keeps you on the ground? Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, what we are going to be doing is reacting to Cliff Nettle debating a Muslim on the idea of God's free will. Before we get started, make sure to definitely go ahead and subscribe and like this video so that this channel and this video gets pushed out to more people who are trying to find out more about the Christian faith. That being said, let's dive straight into the video. Subscribe! All right. <laughs> he created us. He limited his power by giving us what you call free will. Correct. But it doesn't, in the mind, the mind doesn't accept for a creator to have limited power. Can you agree with that? No. No, 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 no. Completely disregarding what Jesus said. No. When you honestly believe that the human, the, in, the innate thoughts, when, when it comes to what is a creator, they will come up in their head and say, the creator has limited power, the creator has limited knowledge. That's not what I said. It is possible for an all-powerful God to partially, partially limit his power, power by creating us free. But that doesn't mean all powerful. If you, dis if you disagree with the definition, fine. I respect your right to disagree with the definition. Okay, so then we'll take but what I'm saying else. is, we'll take it what else. Jesus insisted is, God is all powerful, which means his will shall win in the end but he's partially limited his power by giving us a free will. That's why if I go up to this gentleman, haul back, and send my fist towards his handsome face, God is not gonna automatically put plexiglass in between and I bounce off the plexiglass. He's given me a free will, he's given me a hand, I can give the man money to feed him lunch, or I can roll it into a fist and send it crashing into his handsome face. Okay. I can do either, can't you? Yeah, I, I can hit him if, if I choose. But do you to honestly so. think it's God's will for you to hit him? Absolutely. When we, we had this, what? this discussion before, you said you have free will and you can make the choice to hit him or not hit him. But by free will, you're completely disregarding the option of a limited will. And I asked you before, if you have this free will, you can fly like a bird, you can make the sun come no. from the west. What? But you don't have this ability. No, God did not will for you Those are to have physical this limitations you're talking about. You have switched from free will to, to the limits of gravity. Uh, yes. You're right. Gravity. I cannot fly through the air because gravity holds me to the ground and I don't have wings like a bird. And I'm not an airplane or a jet. I'm a human being. I don't so have the ability to fly. That says nothing about free will. It says a lot about physical limitations. Yes. Which you don't consider to be created by God? So now you're what? I'm, of, you course, just... of course I believe that's created by God. Gravity's created by God. Gravity's created by God. I am created by God, by God yes. without wings, therefore yes. I cannot fly. Okay, yes. so when these physical limitations are created by God, isn't it God's will to not create you with wings and to create this thing you call gravity that keeps you on the ground? My brother, you're watching all of these videos on the deep theological aspects of Christianity, reasons against Islam and atheism, arguments for the existence of God. You know all of these things, but is it making you a better follower of Christ? Is it improving you on your day-to-day basis. If you've been wondering the same thing, then my Discord community in the description down below is perfect for you. Here is the community that you've been longing for of Christians into self-improvement where you can get practical ways on how you can become this new and improved Christian and become a better follower of Christ himself. Click the top link in the description down below and I will see you all in there. It's God's will. Yes. That's God willed yes. to create these things. Yes. That's yes. correct. Yes. So God also willed for you to not have the ability to do I these things. Flying. Correct. Correct. Yes. yes. Correct. So you, with this free will, are now limited by God's will. <laughs> Obviously, they're limited. Yes. Obviously, yes. Your what, will what is the confusing? Is I don't understand. Limited by the will of God completely disregarding no. for you just agreed to that no you just said it no we were talking about physical limits that are created and then we talked about will a will that all of us have that enables us to love or to hate to do good Still limited or to do by evil. the will of god subject to the will of god yes we understand that the will of god of course it, it supersedes everything it overpowers 
everything. But that doesn't negate the idea or the, the fact, actually, that you are free to do whatever it is that you want. You are, yes, bounded by physical limitations and everything around you and everyone around you, morals, etc., etc. But that doesn't negate the validity of your own free will. Like, I don't understand where this confusion is is arising from, nor do I see the necessity for such a discussion. (laughs) But the idea that just because God willed you not and to do something, meaning you 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 get to only play in this area right here because of physical limitations and everything else, that you're not free to go from point A to point B or from point B all the way to point Z without jumping to point Y. Let's just keep it going. My brain is fighting. But God has chosen to give us a precious gift so, okay. of a rational mind yes. and free will. Yes. Okay, now, so he holds you... us responsible for how we use those gifts. If I abuse children, I will have to answer to God on a day of judgment. Absolutely. Yes. If, if I murder, I will have to answer to God on a day of judgment. Yes. But I am free to be a Mother Teresa the second or to be an Adolf Hitler the second. Mm-hmm. I have to choose. I have to make up my life. Guys, so you don't have you to say, study for your next exam. When you say You choose. can just party, party, party. But then you'll flunk, flunk, flunk. Mm-hmm. And if you go to your professor and say, how could you flunk me? He's going to say, I'm sorry, you answered incorrectly. You flunk. Part of having a free will means you understand. <coughs> there are consequences to my decisions. And I have to learn to live with the consequences of my decision to party, 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 because then I'll flunk, flunk, flunk. That's part of growing up and being an adult. <laughs> Homie said flunk, flunk. So can we say that God willed for the existence of time? God created time. God created time. And he existed before the creation of time. Correct. Okay. He is not subject or bound to time. Yes. Correct. So when you say that God chose to give us free will, you're saying at some point he didn't give us free will. At another point, he gave us free will. All occurrences in time that God is not subject to. That would be just as illogical as if I were to say, because God is eternal, God never created human life initially. No, that no. is baloney. Just because God just because God doesn't exist in the, the realm of space and time does not necessarily mean that he cannot create space and time. That's the idea that Frank Turek, I'm relating this to Frank Turek, one of his arguments is the idea that if space and time are material, meaning they are part of our world, right? So space, time are all part of our universe, our our domain of physical necessities, whatever you want to call that thing. That means that if it began to exist, something immaterial and spaceless has to have created whatever this is. But just because space and time now exist does not negate the idea that God exists because he is immaterial, he is timeless, he is spaceless. So... It's hard for us to comprehend because we only have physical limitations, but that doesn't negate the idea or the the fact, rather, that God exists spaceless, timeless, and immaterially. So let's keep it going. My brain is just hurting because I still, I have yet to grasp the idea of this or the point of this discussion. (laughs) As eternal does not mean that we have always existed. Human beings are the creation of God at a mm-hmm. point in human history. Yes. Scientific evidence in is point of human that history. thousands of years ago, human life began. Mm-hmm. About 5 billion years ago, the Earth began. About 15 billion years ago, the universe began. 20 billion years ago, did God know that he was going to create us? Yes. But just because God knew that he was going to create us did not mean that we existed. Absolutely. We didn't exist until God chose to create us. Mm -hmm. Similarly, when God chose to create us, he chose to give us a free will because he created us to love, to Mm -hmm. love him and to love each other. And in order to love, you've got to be free. But you're attributing change to God, whereas the change that actually happens when a creation is created is a change in in that thing. When you say that he decided to do this, he chose to do this, you're saying that there's a change that happens in the self of God that's subject what? to time, and we already agreed that God existed that God existed before the creation of time, and he's not bound or subject to it. 
Okay, according to your belief system, who did God love before God created angels and human beings? This attribute that you call love, that's you, you're gonna have to define that because that's not one of the attributes that comes innate in the human being to the existence of God. Do you believe God. that God loves? I don't know what you mean by love. Will I attribute the word Uhibullah? Absolutely, that's written in the Quran. But this attribute of love, you're gonna have to define what that means for me. To love means to actively wish the well-being of someone else. God actively wishes our well-being, Jesus insisted. Yep. But then That's why if, he died on a if, cross to forgive us and to give us life. That, he actively if, wishes our well-being. That's your excuse when you use that term, God loves everything. That's your excuse to completely disregard God willing for all evil to happen. You believe God wills murder. I am convinced God does not will murder. God hates murder. But will you believe hate, that God will and hate wills an opposite. adult Will to abuse a little child. Attributes. I am convinced God hates it when an adult abuses a little child. Okay, I'll, I'll agree with you. God ordered us not to murder and not to hate each other and not to commit adultery and not to abuse children. Mm -hmm. These are things that we were ordered not to do, mm -hmm. but God still willed for people to do those things so that we would know what not to do. God I, willed I disagree. For and I think Jesus Christ clearly disagrees. So then, God does so, not will that I murder so that these people here can say, now I know that murder's wrong. So then where? You are being given a mind by God and a conscience. You I do see. not need to see, see the murder of a human being I in see. order to know murder is wrong. So that is the end of the video. So I, I, okay, thank goodness that I was able to have the patience and the grace of God has been bestowed upon me in order to finish this <laughs> without exiting the stupid recording. Okay, so. I believe that the idea that the the woman was espousing is the idea that it's the Christian idea of predestination, essentially, that we are merely puppets and everything that we are to do and going to do have already been scripted. And all that we're doing is we're no longer, we don't have free will. All we do is that since God knew that he was going to create us since the beginning of everything before time even existed, all we're doing is just we're physically embodying and emoting, in a sense, the code that has already been programmed by God in us, which I believe is what she's trying to say because of the idea of God wills us to do murders and God wills us, or Allah, I wouldn't say God. So, <laughs> because we believe in two different gods. Because Allah believes that Jesus is not the begotten son of him. But God, the Father, he has begotten Jesus Christ. Anyways, Allah said, or the Quran, or this Muslim woman, says that Allah is the one that wills to do murder, to do all the evil things despite him hating it so that others will see that oh, okay this is actually bad but the god of the bible is way more you know loving and more gracious than that in the sense of he doesn't even have to show you that murder is bad he'll just tell you that murder is bad and then when you go and defy that you'll understand exactly why it's the same thing with the fruit in the garden of eden he doesn't want you to in the sense of god wants you to follow him out of your own free will because then that's actually love. He's not dictating you to just... How how can you tell him to... Or how can you tell a man to love God when there's no other option to do so? It's like a man that says, I love apples, but all he ever eats is apples because there's no other fruit that exists. Like, yeah, you love apples, but there's there's... There's no orange, there's no banana. You don't even understand the concept of a banana or a strawberry. So how can you really tell me that you love apples if you've never had anything else? It's kind of the same thing with free will or, or loving in general. But in the idea of free will, just God doesn't write a script or code our behaviors and then lock it in a vault somewhere and all we have to do now is to enact it. No. He knows what's going to happen because he's not bound by time. The same way how I don't know what's going to happen because I am bound by time. I don't know what's going to happen because I am locked into the framework of how time works. I can't tell you what's going to happen five minutes from now, even though I can conceptualize it because 
God has given us the rationality. And since we are image of God on earth, we are images of the power and the authority of God here on earth. We have the idea to conceptualize even time ahead, but we can't physically do that because we are limited by physical necessities. Anyways, what that means is that he knows Alpha and Omega. He knows the beginning to the end because he is immaterial. He can literally, this is time. We are bound by time. He's not. He can literally zip across. <laughs> God, God can zip across time because he's not bound by it. So the idea of free will, hopefully, as I understand it, have fluidly articulated myself as well and the idea of time as well and the idea of loving. So that's the difference between Allah of the Quran and the God of the Bible in the sense of, yes, God in the Bible gives us free will. And even God himself, I believe this was in passage of uh, the Old Testament wherein God says, I give you life, I give you death, but choose life. Here is life, here is death. Choose life. He literally gives us the authority and the freedom to choose whatever it is that we want to. And the Allah of the Quran literally scripted everything and all we have to do is enact it, which kind of begs the question of saying, then why why have the need to convert or revert people to Islam or to becoming Muslim when it may or may not be Allah's will for me not to become Muslim? Maybe you're disobeying the will of Allah to convert me into Muslim. So you're essentially disobeying God or your God, which is Allah. So essentially and hopefully that makes sense that being said it has been ronald aaron hopefully subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified anytime we upload a new video and of course like this video and share it to more people who are trying to understand more of the christian faith and comment down below your thoughts and if you are going to comment make sure to keep it peaceful cordial and respectful in the comment section down below this has been ronald aaron also Join my free Discord community of Christians into self-improvement, practically becoming better followers of Jesus Christ himself. And follow me on my Instagram at the Renal Aaron. It has been your boy, Renal Aaron. I don't know why I said that probably like three times in this video, but I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.